Hi guys, I hope you're all well. I hope you're enjoying Halloween. Do me a favour, can you smash that like button please for me? And if you can, share with your friends on different media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. I really, really would appreciate that. Today I want to read you a story called Witchcraft. Now, I want to leave it up to you to decide whether you think this is a true story or not. It was about 1982 or 1983 and I had met Suzanne a year before I was due to go into the army. Suzanne's sister, Diane, had moved next door and me and Sue hit it off straight away. I was 15 and she was 16. At first it was just sitting around talking and listening to music but Suzanne was very different to the normal girls that I used to knock about with. She was very sort of spiritual into witchcraft and spooky stuff like that and tarot cards and everything. And I, being the good Catholic boy that I was, I could act like a complete dick all week, fighting and smoking and drinking, but every Sunday morning I was in church attending mass, acting like butter wouldn't melt. Now, I'd had girlfriends before, you know, when you when you kids you have girlfriends. But this was completely different. I became completely obsessed with this girl. I couldn't stop thinking about her. Constantly, all that was on my mind. And my mates had noticed as well. I'd stopped playing football at weekends. I stopped going boxing in the week. It was a case of me just counting the seconds until the time that I saw her again. Anyway, time was flying by now, and before I knew it, my enlistment paperwork had arrived, and my dates that I was due to join the army, and the date was the 12th of December, a date that I'd looked forward to so much before I met Sue, but now I was dreading it. Leaving her away, leaving her and being away for eight weeks. Every time I thought about leaving, I got that sick feeling in my guts, like I'd been punched in the tummy. Awful, absolutely awful. But Sue was fine about me going away. Then the weekend before I was due to leave, she asked me to come round so we could talk. Now, guys, we've all had that feeling when the shit is about to hit the fan. And it's dear John time. So that's what I thought was going to happen. But no, she wasn't splitting up with me. She just wanted to play a little game. Okay, the room was really dark with candles all around the room. The flames of the candles made the room seem that the room was alive with dancing shadows. I'd always said no when she wanted to do readings for me. Um, tarot card readings, because... It used to scare me. On this particular evening, I felt that... I don't know. I just felt really... Okay, I'm up for it. So then she had this... She produced this strange bottle. And it was covered in jewels and pearls. A material that looked like leather. And she offered me a drink of wine, which obviously I said, yeah. She insisted that that I pour the wine out into the two glasses. The wine was really deep red colour. I took a sip and even though it tasted very strange, it was surprisingly Moorish. Sue started to lay the cards out in the shape of an upside down cross and asked me to take the card from the middle. As I turned the cards over, I started to feel really sleepy. My eyes couldn't focus and the candlelight was making the room move and spin round and round. All of a sudden I felt scared. Sue's face seemed to change. She got up and helped me over to the bed and that's the last thing I can remember. The next morning I woke up. Sue was laying there next to me, but she was slightly covered by the sheet. Then I noticed my finger was really sore and I had a small deep, what seemed like a paper cut on my finger and when I put my hand up and felt my head I was 
certain that I was missing a little bit of hair. Anyway, the week passed really quickly and soon it was time for me to join the army. The day I woke up, I was feeling sick. I just wanted to throw up, but I managed to get the train and off I went. The further I got away from Sue, the better I started to feel, but there was always this aching feeling in the pit of my tummy. So I started my training and, in eight, and the eight weeks flew by. I'd been writing to Sue and she'd been writing back to me and I was really looking forward to seeing her. But when I got home, she'd bloody moved. Remember, we didn't have mobile phones. So I pretty much had a broken heart, to be honest. And I can remember just crying like a baby. Anyway, time healed, so they say. And then about five or six months later, I tried to move on still have this feeling in the pit of my stomach. We were on the, an adventure training couple of weeks in North Wales and we had gone out this night into town or into the village and as squaddies do we headed for the local boozer. We were all stood drinking and just by chance I looked outside and at the pub window was Suzanne looking in. And she put her hood up and walked off. I put my drink down and ran out of the pub, but she was gone. I looked left and right, and then a good three to four hundred metres down the road, or down this narrow street, I saw her crossing over a winding river on a small humpback bridge. I ran as fast as I could, but she had disappeared into the night, and my rational brain couldn't understand where she could have gone. There was nowhere for her to go, she had just vanished. Then the realisation that she had been in the same Welsh village at the same time as me was crazy. I just couldn't understand it and I couldn't put two and two together. It was coming up with 500. A couple of months passed and I started to forget again, this time forgetting her completely. Until one day, I was going back to my unit and I was at Darlington bus station. All of a sudden I got that same punched feeling in my tummy, started sweating and feeling sick. Then all of a sudden I got up and these random numbers started running around in my head. I looked up and there were three public phone boxes on the wall. So I dragged myself over, I put some money in one of the phone boxes and pressed the buttons on the phone. Just random numbers, but my, to my astonishment, the phone started to ring and someone picked up the phone. There was silence for a moment and then a familiar voice said, Hi Rob, how are you? 